Hi everyone, I'm going to be colouring this picture in today. This is from um, Rita Berman's book, um, Minorizer Dirty Europa. It's opposite the Pisa page with the moped. We've done these couple already and we're moving on to this one. I've been trying out different pencil brands in this book on this page just to have a go and see what works with the paper. So far everything has worked brilliantly. Um, I've tried polychromos on a different page in the book. I've tried Bambino crayons and I've tried, this was Castle Arts today. I'm going to try some Black Widows on this page just because I have them here and I want to try different things. Now, here, this is actually um, a full piece here, this whole page, this whole bit. I thought it finished there but actually it goes all the way through we'll see how it takes us so the first thing we've got is we've got sky we've got a lot of skies so I'm going to do that first and uh, I'm going to grab a couple of glues from my Black Widow I've got the Black Widow spider set so it's 24 pencils but that's okay I'm going to use two shades of blue so I've got a uh, zephyr blue and I've got a forget me not. I'm going to start with the dark blue and what I'm going to do is just mark out a few areas of sky where I want it to be a little bit darker. Now I'm just checking here, this building comes down here and across here. Now I would have thought sky might show through here but there's a line here so what I think is there's a sort of wall or something behind these pillars so the sky only goes to um, here and then around here. So I'm going to start I'm actually going to put some darker colour in the corners, I think, just to make it look a little bit interesting and a little bit different. We'll see how it works out like that. So not loads and maybe just around the edge of the picture. And these are sort of fantasy pictures, they don't have to look conventional around here even though this is not the end of the page obviously this is the building but we'll go up there and then we've got do a little bit here as well maybe we'll go along there and um, across the top here and someone's obviously got their washing hanging out which is great fun and uh, they've which looks like they've got rugs or blankets hanging up and uh, they have, uh, and we've got the house to do as well. So that's fun. So now I'm going to grab my forget me not and sort of do, oh, you're out of shot. Sorry. Do the rest of the sky. So I'm going to go over the top of the blue that I've done already and try and blend that all together. And then just do the rest. Now backgrounds can be tricky. We've got a blue sky next to here so that it's going to look quite similar but I'm not worried about that. I'm treating each picture individually rather than trying to match them as a page. Um, I think because backgrounds are tricky doing them on smaller pictures like this is a really good introduction because you don't have to persevere for as long. You get the idea of what to do how many layers of pencil you might need or what um, materials you might use. I don't always use pencil, you can use um, pastel, the soft pastels. It's quite a nice way to do a big background very, very quickly. Um, also, some people like to use um, an oil pastel or a watercolour um, paint or watercolour pencils, which you can sort of blend across more easily in the larger space. Um, there are some people who use, um, what are they called? There's a Caran d'Ache product which looks like a crayon but I think you wet it. You, people use it for background. I'm sure people know. So there are lots of options but it's finding one that suits you. Obviously pencil takes a long old time but it can give really fabulous results. Now I never try, I do chalk pastels as I said, I never try to do um, backgrounds with paint. I've done one once and it was watercolour pencil so it was what I'm used to doing and then I just activated it with a little bit of blending fluid actually rather than water. And uh, that was okay, 
but it wasn't it wasn't really any less effort than just doing a pencil one it just smoothed it a little bit so uh, I'm not very good at painting it's not something that I'm practiced at that I do very much so it means that I'm not confident in it and I often just make a big mess so I decided not to do that at the moment you know I feel like I've got enough to practice with my pencils there's a lot going on a lot of new techniques to learn so I'm just sticking with them and with the um, soft pastels are really easy so I use those with them now we've done a layer of the lighter blue again my book keeps moving along doesn't it I'm going to think about putting in the dark again and just going over those edges so you can actually see that there is some dark darker blue we've got something to sort of blend it into this time so hopefully it can look a little smoother so this is the zephyr blue sorry i didn't say just the same colour, we haven't got any other colours out yet. Now the reason I've done this background first is because I want to make sure that it, everything else works with it and if I leave it till last I may find that I haven't got, I've used all my colours because I've only got 24 here and I've got nothing left to, uh, to use for the background. So uh, also if you do the background, if you leave the background till last, you, I tend to rush it because I've, I mean, you know, I'm nearly finished so I'm just going for it and that means that it doesn't always look that good. I think we've, we've got that done now so I'm happy with that background. I'm going to crack on with some of the details. Now the clouds, I don't want to just leave white, I want to put a little bit of pink on them. Now because these Black Widows are vibrant. It's quite tricky to get the pink looking pale, but I'm going to have a go with the cyanide pink. And I'm going to do in here first and try to keep it fairly light and fluffy and just gently fade that colour up the cloud. Same here. Try and keep it faded there where the clouds meet so it gives more of a three dimensional look that this one's behind the other one. There we go. Now, if you want something a bit more special on your clouds, one idea is that you could put some um, glitter pen, um, um, silver glitter pen or silver pen around the edge of it make it look quite pretty I'm not going to do that at the minute because if I do I'll just smudge it all over the rest of the page so now we need to think about these three items that are hanging up now I feel that I would like to do them so they're similar colors so they so the color palette isn't too mush, mishmash I'm going to grab a, um, a pink and a purple and see how we get on so I've got amethyst and plum pudding in this set the plum pudding I'm going to go for first because I know what I'm doing with these. And what I'm thinking is maybe I have pink hearts on the middle item, rug or whatever, and then the outside rugs will have their main colour is pink, and then maybe details in the purple. So I'm going to do the details first. I'm going to grab my amethyst and do these um, teardrop shapes. I'm just doing them solidly because they are quite small. You could add a little shine with a white pen or something if you wanted to. And we've got dots on this one, they're quite fine. I'm just going to move so I can see better because I missed completely there. In fact, I'm going to sharpen my pencil. I think that will help me. I love, oops, it's just cracking now. I love the, this book. 
There's so many pretty pictures in it. I cannot get that in the centre. It's because I'm I can't see very well. I'm um my eyesight isn't brilliant. So I just have to go for it and hope it's near enough. Oh, I'm going to do that line there in purple too. And here. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to fill it in. There we go. And then obviously this middle one needs to be purple. I'm going to do little circle motion to uh, see if I can get an evenish covering of colour and also I think it could be a fluffy item so it could have this sort of a little texture on it so if it looks slightly uneven in a fluffy way I think well, we can get away with it there we go I'm going to leave that like that I'll move you back over I don't know why the book keeps moving whoops but uh, the um, plum pudding is uh, running away so we're going to do the same on this one so a lightish circly motion we'll get hopefully a sort of fluffy look and it's not like it's fur you know we don't need to worry about each little line or anything like that it's just an even type texture to it. Now this bit behind I think would be slightly darker along here so I'm going to put a hard layer there and just press a little bit harder so we get a darker look. Okay. And then we're back to our lighter touch with this one. Now it's all very blue and purple and pink, isn't it, at the moment with the pink clouds and the everything else. So uh, we're um, we're uh, think about the building. I think I'm going to do something a little bit different with the building so that we haven't got all the same colours. I need to do those little clothes pegs. I'm going to do them quite conventionally in brown. This is the tarantula brown. I hope you can't hear all those voices out so I've got my door open because um, it's hot and it's a bit noisy outside. I'm sorry about that hear the chattering going on and the washing line I'm going to do in the stink bug colour it's a sort of ropish looking colour still can't see there we go and now we're going to move along a little bit and look at the building now let me see. I'm thinking we could introduce some oranges and reds as well as browns just to make it look a little more fun. We've got our window as well. So I'm going to actually just do the window in a yellow with the light showing through. I'm going to grab the um, banana, make it really bright. So if I do that first, that will help to guide us with the rest, hopefully. And this one, I think. easier to see what I've missed if I look in the camera and just go over when I, I find it very hard with solid yellow really shows up when you miss bits I think that's okay apart from that corner right the frame of the window um I think hmm do we want it to stand out probably yes a little bit I'm gonna do an orange we've got quite a vibrant pumpkin orange colour so I'm going to do that for this frame. I'm not going to do anything fancy with this. I'm just going to keep it quite solid. And I'm going to do 
the very outside frame in the same way. Now I'm thinking about this sort of balcony and other details that I might do in the same colour so that it all ties together. Um, for the the balcony top, I think I'll do it in this colour. I'm going to fade it slightly though towards the middle and the bottom. It's a very nice little balcony. They're so difficult to maintain. We have one on our house. and. Uh, our houses are getting to the age where the, um, they're all rotting. Um, fortunately, I had mine repaired quite a while ago Oops. and had quite a bit of the wooden parts replaced by plastic, which looks like wood, so uh, it isn't so rotten. There we go. So I'm just using a technique where I'm making it darker at the ends. And fading towards the middle I think it just looks a bit more interesting and I'm going to do the same underneath here so we've got a bright and cheerful house oh, I've got some paper under the page I'm just moving it because it wasn't fully into the spine and if the, it slips out and does that you get a funny line so I've got a piece of paper under to stop any colour transfer on the back and uh, I just need to be careful that it's in the right place. I want to make these darker on the outside and lighter towards the middle so they look more rounded. I'm going to do all of them in this. This will probably be the last bit that I do in this colour though. I'm trying to think about what I'm going to do behind here, but I think I'm going to do this wall and just take that colour through. I think that will work for us. It's uh, nice and fun sometimes just doing the same thing over and over. It keeps it really relaxing because you don't have to think about what you're doing for your next bit because it's the same. Oops, got that one. There we go. So I think that's probably it in that colour. What I'm gonna do is go for a slightly um a slightly duller orange which is the toadstool and do this whole building. I don't want it all to be the same colour though, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do patches of this colour in areas and fade them so it's more intense towards the centre of the patch. This one's on the edge, it's a little bit different and uh, around here and sort of try and fade it at the edges and make it more intense towards the middle And try and make sort of random areas of this colour and then I'm going to go over it with a different colour and hopefully it'll just look a little bit more fun see if it works in a minute it's often a lot of experimenting in my videos yep I think that'll do I was just looking so I'm going to go for this colour which is the egg yolk, which is a very orangey yellow colour, and go right over the top of those patches and take that colour right through. And I've done stripy action there, which isn't ideal, it's better to try and do a circular motion. It stops you getting obvious lines. It's hard there because we've only got a small space. We've got a little bit more space. Try and do a circular motion if you can. And 
and of course you could go more conventional colours and get some sort of brick reds or even some houses of grey sort of thing but I think it can be fun to do some bright colours. I don't know what it is. I think it's because this is my first Rita Berman book and my first experience of colouring her work and when I look at examples of her, her pictures coloured online most people use so many bright colours and I think she does as well and it just makes me think that I need to use bright colours in her pictures obviously I don't have to but uh, it makes me feel that I should and I think it works really well so uh, I'm very happy um, doing that and it's different to how I normally colour which I think is good oh we've gone all wonky now right so we've done that we need to think about what to do with these bricks and the balcony and down here so I'm looking at my colours I do have some red um, I think I will go for a little red, but I don't want it too bright. So I'm going for the ladybug, and I'm going to do these. I'm going to try and press a little gently. Let me see. Mm, yeah, I think that's okay. Can you see what I'm doing? You can. Of course, if you wanted, you could put this brick pattern across the whole of the building rather than just in this little area. It depends what you want to do. And I'm going to do these slats in the red as well. It is going to make this a little darker than the building, but I think that's okay. And that bit under there to sort of tie in a mat. Now underneath here, um, I like the idea that these are almost rainbows and I'm going to do all the bottoms in the red, I'm not going to do a rainbow but I'm going to do a sort of um, colour range as it were. So all these bottom ones in the red. Sort of darkest, and we'll move from darkest to lightest. So I'm going to grab that um, pumpkin that we used earlier to do the next one up. Should be fun. No all different amounts of loops or arches so that's uh, interesting makes them all look a little different you might feel that should be red I wasn't sure so I decided not to okay and then we have I'm going to do the toadstool colour this part This is quite an interesting colour because it's quite a peachy colour almost. I think it always looks nice with a bit of yellow on top. Let's see what you think. Here's the egg yolk. I'm going to put it over the top of this and on this final one. Of course, you could do any. Colour. This is just my idea and interpretation. This one. And the very top section, I'm going to use the banana. Oh, we we'll use that for the window there. Hmm. Will it look like it's. No, I think I'm just going to use it gently. I think it will work. If it looks odd, we'll um, put another colour on top. And I think that's okay. I was wondering whether it might look like it was we were trying to be a window. But I think 
think it works. So let me move it back into shot so you can see the whole thing. There we go. So there's our very vibrant house with our washing line and clouds. What I find fascinating is that the clouds are underneath the washing line, which indicates that uh, that they're really, really high up in the sky. But anyway, that's me done. I hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.